So 2.6 is kind of in a culmination of what we've been working on. We're going to be talking about applied problems and problem solving if you're given some scenario. So five steps to solving a problem when you're given something in algebra. Read it. Get familiar. What are they asking for? Translate it into an equation. Solve it. Check the answer in the original. Then, as always with applied, we want to state the answer in a sentence at the end. So someone who's not mathematically inclined should be able to read your conclusion and understand what you did. So first example, while on sabbatical, a history professor spent six weeks biking 995 kilometers on I-94 from Butte, Montana through Billings to Bismarck, North Dakota. At Billings, he was four times as far from Bismarck as he was from Butte. How far had he biked and how far did he still need to bike in order to reach the end? So I like to draw a picture. Always with applied problems, draw a picture. Generally, you conceptualize better what they're saying. So where did these start? The professor started at Butte. Okay, so this was his start. In the middle somewhere, he stopped at Billings before he made it all the way to Bismarck. And this was the end. Okay. So in total, we know that he biked 995 kilometers. So from the start to the finish, I know that that distance was 995 kilometer, kilometer, however you want to say it. Okay. So we know a relationship between the distance between Butte and Billings and Billings and Bismarck. So let me just read that sentence again. At Billings, he was four times as far from Bismarck as he was from Butte. Okay, so when he was here, he was four times as far this way as he was this way. So if I let this unknown distance be D, the distance from Butte to Billings, then the distance from Billings to Bismarck is going to be what? Four times D. Because he had four times as far from Bismarck as he was from Butte. Okay. So hopefully you can see where our equation is going to come from. Altogether, the distance from Butte to Billings and Billings to Bismarck is 995. And we have a relationship with those variables. So if I add them together, that distance and this distance totals 995. And we can figure out D since it's an equation in one variable. Then eventually figure out the distance from Billings to Bismarck because that's what we're asking for. How far had he gone? How far did he have left to go? So let's solve. Combine in like terms, I've got five factors of D getting D on its own, D is equal to 199. And what is D? We let D represent a distance, so what units should we have on that variable? Kilometers. And what was D? Only one part of the question have we answered. D is the distance from Butte to Billing, so that's as far as he's traveled so far. And how far does he have left to go? Four times this. So, I always like to write a little sentence. He has biked 199 kilometers to Billings and has four times D, four times 199, which is 796 kilometers to go. And if you weren't sure if you calculated it correctly, have them together and see if you actually hit 995 and you do. Okay, not so bad. Draw a picture. It's helpful. So turn in the page. One for you to try. The greatest distance run in 24 hours is 188 miles. After 10 hours, the runner was approximately three times as far from the finish line as he was from the start line. How far had he run? Draw a picture. Solve for how far. 
So the setup for this one is very similar to the last. We have someone running. This is the start line. <coughs> and I'll draw the finish line. And they took a break at the 10 hour mark. So somewhere in between there, I'm just going to call this the 10 hour mark. What else do we know? The greatest distance run in 24 hours. Do we care about that piece of information? Not really. You can't see that. No, there we go. But we do care that the total distance was 188 miles because from start to finish, I know this distance is 188 miles. That is a long way. Okay, so at the 10 hour mark, the runner was approximately three times as far from the finish line as he was from the start line. So three times as far here as he was from the beginning. So again, if I let this distance be D, this distance is going to be what? Three times D. And again, I know the entire distance was 188 miles. So if I've got the first chunk that he ran, and when he has left to run, together that has to be 188. So we can combine like terms, divide by 4. D is 47. And in this case, what are our units? So D was distance, and in this problem, we're talking about miles. So what were we asked to solve? How far had he run? So he ran 47 miles, and how much longer did he have left to go? They didn't ask us for it, but we can answer that question. Three times 47. So he had run, <coughs> excuse me, 47 miles, and has three times 47, which is 141 miles left to go. Drawing a picture helps so much with these kinds of problems. Breaks it down and helps you visualize what's going on. Next, we're talking about my grandma. So my grandma's knitting a scarf with shades of pink and green yarn. She starts with the pink section, then a mixed section, so pink and green, then a purely green section. The mixed section is one-third the length of the pink. The green is one-sixth the length of the pink. The scarf altogether is nine feet. Find the length of each section of the scarf. So let's draw a picture. It's helpful. Hey, I have pink and green. Let's try that. So the first chunk she starts off with is pink. Okay. So she has a pink chunk of scarf and she has a little mixed section. So we've got green and we've got pink. Then in the end, she's got a purely green section. Okay. So as we're reading this, that second, no, excuse me, third line, the mixed section is one third the length of the pink. The green is one sixth the length of the pink. So the mixed and the green sections all have relationships according to the pink. So the pink is kind of my unknown. I have information about these two based off of the pink section. So I'm going to let P be the length of the pink section. Length of pink section. Okay. So what other parts do we know? P is the length of the pink. What is the relationship of the piece in the middle? So the mixed section is one-third the length of the pink. So we've got one-third times P. That's the length here. It's kind of poor, poorly seen. There we go. And what about the green? The green section is one-sixth of the pink. So my drawing isn't very proportional, but this guy's even smaller. Okay, what other piece do we know? I have individually a relationship about the pieces. 
But all together, how long is the scarf? Nine feet. So all together, nine feet long. So what does that tell me? Okay, so if I add up the pink part, the mixed part, and the green part, all together it has to be nine feet long. So when I add pink and the mixed and the green, all together it's nine feet. So I have fractions. I don't want to have to deal with fractions. So how can I clear out all of these denominators, getting rid of those fractions? Okay. I want to clear denominators by doing what? Multiplying by the LCD, which in this case is what? What is my least common denominator between 3 and 6? So 3 is inside of 6. So 6 is our LCD. So let's multiply both sides. This side by 6 and everything over here by 6 as well. Because what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Don't forget about him. So let's solve. 9 times 6 is 54. And as we distribute, we get 6P, 2P, and 1P got rid of all those fractions, which is nice. So I've got 6, 7, 8, 9 all together. So when I divide both sides by 9, what is P in this case? 6. And what is, sorry, you can't see that, P is 6. What are our units on P? So we let P be the length of the pink section. And all of our lengths are in terms of feet. So the pink section is six feet long. So we can figure out the mixed section and the green. So in words, the pink is six feet long. Mixed is what? So one third of the pink. So six divided by three gives me two feet. And then the green section is one-sixth of P. So six divided by six gives me one foot. So the pink chunk, pretty long. Shorter mixed, really short green all together. If you weren't sure if you did it correctly, add them up. Make sure if six plus two plus one gives you nine, and they have that relationship of a third of the pink and a sixth of the pink, then it's true. All right, so on the next page, one for you to try. A Little bit different. Amy, Ben, and Jake all like to hang out. Together, their age is total of 50 years. Amy is one-third the age of Jake. Ben is three-fourths the age of Jake. Find out how old everyone is. So in this case, we can't draw a picture, really, to set up the relationships, but it's very similar to what we've just done. So give that one a shot. So reading that question, what do you notice? All together, their ages total 50 years. So I know if I'm adding Amy's age, Ben's, and Jake's, all together, that should give me 50. So that's one piece of the puzzle. But now I have three unknowns. I can't solve that for a specific one and get out a real constant answer. So we need more information. Amy is one-third the age of Jake. Ben is three-fourths the age of Jake. So we can write Amy and Ben both in terms of Jake. So what are we doing? I'm going to say Amy is what? One-third the age of Jake. Ben is three-fourths the age of Jake. Okay. So now if I use these substitutions, all of their ages will be in terms of one variable. Jake, and we can solve for that. So since I know Amy is equal to one-third Jake, I can substitute in there. Ben is three-fourths the age of Jake, so I can substitute in there. And don't forget, Jake is still included. So we have Amy, Ben, and Jake all together are 50 years. Okay, so now we have an equation in one variable. We can work with that. I want to clear out the denominators, get rid of those fractions. So what is our LCD that we're multiplying by? 
So between 3 and 4, 12 is the smallest. Don't forget to also do it over here. That'll be the biggest mistake. So let's see. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. 3 times 3 gives me 9. And 12 times 1 just gives me 12. 50 times 12 gives me 600. So all together, what do I have? I've got 25 jakes equaling 600. So if I divide by 25, jake is 24. Okay. But we were asked, how old is everyone? So we figured out Jake's age. Jake is 24 years old. And again, we want to put units on it. What about Amy? So she is one-third of Jake's age. So 24 divided by 3 gives me 8. Amy is 8 years old. And Ben is three-fourths the age of Jake. So again, 24 divided by 4 gives us 6. 6 times 3 gives me 18. So it's kind of creepy that an 18 and 24 year old are hanging out with an 8 year old girl, but maybe they're cousins. We'll just put them in the same family and it's not weird anymore. Okay. So we have to recognize what relationship do we have? I want to write the unknowns all in terms of one variable so we can solve. 